Hi, welcome to another edition of the Everlast Power video series. In today's edition, we want to discuss a little bit about aluminum. We're not going to be talking so much about how to weld aluminum today, but actually how to grind and take care of aluminum. Now, one of the ways that you cut aluminum typically uh, is with a plasma cutter. Now, if you're using a plasma cutter, you're going to have an oxide layer that's left behind. It's going to be a little bit on the rough side typically. So what we want to do today is actually show you the proper method or the proper type of utensils to use to grind aluminum. Now you need to make, take into special consideration how you're going to handle the aluminum. Aluminum is non-magnetic and if it were to get in your eye it would cause serious damage and it would be very difficult to remove. Typically if it's a magnetic item like a piece of iron filing or something it would do damage to your eye but uh, a specialist could go in there and remove it with a magnet or some other special tool. But aluminum is a little bit more tricky to get out and that way it's a lot more dangerous to, to handle. Now what we have here is a piece of metal. I did not cut this, but this was cut by an amateur who had really never used a plasma book cutter before. And this is the kind of stuff that you can typically expect to see. You can see the dross right here. And this is the stuff that I'm talking about while you're grinding or, or machining this stuff. It can actually fly up into your eye or even get into your hairline and migrate down later even after you're finished grinding. So um, this is the stuff that will not come out very easily and it, it gets pulverized or it's splintered into much finer particles than this and it's very difficult to get off your body, out of your skin, or out of your eye. Okay, what we have here are a few items that we've come up with that you're typically going to use to grind or prepare aluminum before you weld. Now what we have over here is a standard grinding disc. Now this says metal, but let me warn you, this is not typically what you want to use to grind aluminum. One is that the way this is designed, the surface of the material will actually load up with aluminum. And when you're grinding, what's going to happen, this metal is going to embed itself more into the grinding stone than is going to be ground off and it's going to become very heavy and it's, it's actually going to almost like melt the aluminum in as you're grinding. So what happens is when this stone starts to load up with the aluminum, it can fly apart and disintegrate on you. So you don't want to use this typically in most situations. Now if you do have to use one of these type wheels for, for grinding aluminum, you can get some beeswax and apply it to the surface here and that will prevent the aluminum from loading up. Now that's hard to find sometimes the beeswax, but you can get the beeswax and put it on here and prevent the stone from loading up. Now what we have here are two specialized aluminum grinding stones. Now these are for a four and a half inch angle grinder. And this is kind of a buttery yellow looking stone. And what you feel along here, this almost feels greasy. It's got the wax impregnated into it or whatever material that they use to prevent the aluminum from loading up. Now along the edge here, you can see some of the same butter color here. But this has got a little darker color surface to the initial layer of the stone. Uh, this is actually a little bit cheaper than this. Uh, this stone like this is about uh, $15 if you get a good price on it. And this one is probably about $8 or $9. So you can pay what you want to, but performance and the ability to last will be affected by how much you pay. I had this brush for some time in my shop, and uh, you can obviously see that it's slightly worn here. Um, this is what I use to prep aluminum. It's a stainless steel brush, and this is what you're supposed to use to prep aluminum before you start welding. Now you can actually get a stainless steel cut brush, which I do use here, um, but this cut brush is uh, very important that you get a knotted type or one that's twisted like this because when you're running aluminum, the, the problem is that the standard strands of stainless steel will flake off or fly off and in a knotted cup like this, they typically don't do it as bad. Let's deal with the last thing here. This is acetone. 
Now, one of the things about acetone is it's actually a recommended solvent for cleaning aluminum. All your aluminum that you're going to get has, has some kind of film or something on it. So before you actually start uh, with aluminum, you want to take acetone and after you've ground it and done everything you're going to do to it, you want to take a rag and wipe it down with acetone. Now use gloves and common sense when handling acetone because it is an organic solvent and the vapors can be harmful and the acetone can soak into your skin pretty quickly. Now if you're not going to use acetone, be sure to use the specified aluminum cleaner. There are very few cleaners that you should be using for aluminum. And never ever use brake cleaner or any chlorinated solvent. Now what we're going to do, we're going to actually just take a little bit of this right here and we're going to dress it with this stone. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole piece here because I'm, we're going to use this for something later. Uh, I want to take a, just a little bit of this edge off here and just demonstrate this uh, special grinding stone for this. Now you can see how it does here. It actually takes the uh, metal down pretty fast. Um, it doesn't over grind it, so it won't be like using a standard type grinding disc with steel, but it does take it down pretty quick and it does leave a nice finish so that you can uh, take a little acetone and wipe it down and weld to later. One of the biggest problems when welding aluminum is the fact that it's not clean enough. Now the AC action in Deering TIG will actually clean the aluminum and you do get cleaning action while you're welding with MIG or a spool gun. The problem that we run into is even though it has cleaning which may remove some of the aluminum oxide, there's still occasionally where you're, a problem where you're going to have some left or that you're not getting enough cleaning to begin with. I know you can just start off TIG welding the ugliest piece of aluminum, turn up the uh, balance if you've got uh, uh, got an inverter type machine and just start welding. Well, that's fine, but your best welds are going to be made when the aluminum is absolutely spotlessly clean. Now, if you have any more questions, you know, feel free to give us a call at the number listed at the end of the video, and we'll be glad to talk with you about it.